Hey guys, this is Nick and today we're gonna talk about the last major desktop environment that I have never used and that's XFCE. This is the first video in a series that will cover the default layout and the desktop, the default applications and the customization options. So I have never used XFCE for any period longer than 5 minutes so I'm going in fresh. And do you know what's also fresh? Today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own using WireGuard or OpenVPN and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to 24-7 by phone or support ticket. Even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own servers, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. Seeing a vanilla XFC running in the wild is a rare sight. Its beauty and majesty often marred by the uncaring hands of men and women of little faith. So crappy Scottish accent aside, uh, finding a distribution that ships XFC as its developers intended is extremely difficult. I could only find Arch or Fedora on the major distribution landscape. So I went with Fedora XFCE. I only had to change the theme because they put Advaita on there and I wanted the default elementary XFCE theme, the Greybird theme, I think it's called. So XFC isn't a newcomer in the Linux desktop space. It's been created in 1996, even before GNOME, and it's been updated ever since. It's based on GDK, the GIMP toolkit, which is the same underlying libraries that are used to build GNOME or elementary OS, and XFC actually made the switch to GDK3 in 2015. XFC used to stand for XForms Common Environment because they use something called XForm, but they have rewritten the desktop since, now it used GDK, so XFC just stands for XFCE. It aims to be fast and lightweight in terms of resources, but since it's heavily customizable, you can make it look and feel like something more modern. Now, as I said in the intro, this is just the first video in a series. I'm going to talk about the default desktop and the default layout, not about how you can customize it to fill in the gaps that I find annoying in the default configuration. So let's start with the desktop. And the default layout of XFCE seems to conform to today's standards in terms of UX, at least on the surface. No, not you, surface, go away. You have a top bar and you have a dock with some shortcuts. The top bar has an applications menu, a task list with all your open windows in the traditional older Windows 95 to Windows Vista style. It also has a virtual desktop switcher with four virtual desktops by default, the notification tray, followed by the date and time and a user slash system menu. The dock only has a show desktop icon and launchers for a few apps. Here on Fedora, it's the terminal, file manager, web browser and application finder followed by a file menu that lets you quickly get to the folders in your home directory. Now, XFC also uses desktop icons, which will suit a lot of people, but which I don't like for any number of reasons. Now, you actually paused the video to read that, didn't you? Now, all these elements work fine, but you can clearly see that they're done in the old school style, kinda like GNOME 2 worked. Both the top bar and the docks are panels that you can really tweak to your liking. You can change the height, the length, make them horizontal or vertical, add some opacity or use a background image, and sort the various items that are inserted inside those panels. Now, it's all pretty simple to use, but it's not very what you see is what you get, because I'm used to how Kenny does things. You can edit the panels, you can edit the widgets that you put inside the panels, and it's all done by interacting with these elements themselves. On XFCE, you interact with a window, and when you click apply, it's gonna change the order and the look and feel of the panel. It's not as intuitive. Now let's move back to the top panel. The applications menu is a simple list of categories with drop down menus, and there are a lot of items here. You get some favorites on top as well, which I couldn't find a way to change, and then the categories, including the settings. And yes, the settings elements are available as individual items or as a full settings app, whatever you prefer. 
I really like that users can just access a specific config option without having to open the whole settings app. If you know what you're looking for, it's way faster than hunting for the right category inside of a monolithic app. Now I'm going to sound like the old bastard that I am, but I really love the way GNOME 2 did the settings with the settings menu, and I don't understand why we can't have it anymore. The task list is pretty simple. It only shows your current open tabs and lets you minimize them by clicking on their title or restore them by clicking again. It's super familiar if you've ever used previous versions of Windows before Windows 7. Now personally, I'd prefer if the dock was where this was handled. Having a separate quick app launcher and task manager doesn't seem super legible or efficient to me, but maybe it's because I'm used to having a more standard dock after years of using Elementor OS and no KDE with Latte dock. The virtual desktop switcher is really simple, showing an outline of the app windows opened on each desktop and letting you switch in one click. The notification tray works as you'd expect, showing indicators and icons for apps that integrate there. The default indicators are for the network, audio, power manager, and notifications. They are already basic and simple. The date and time applet just displays a calendar, and the user menu lets you log out, shut down, or switch users, although I couldn't find a restart option for some reason. Now, the desktop itself hosts some default icons, and you can use it as you might be used to, to store some files, some shortcuts, or mix both. You monster. Right-clicking on the desktop shows a little context menu with some quick options to change how things look and sort your desktop icons or create folders and documents. It also lets you quickly start any application you want. XFC also comes with a bunch of default keyboard shortcuts to make things a bit faster. The application finder can be called using Alt plus F3, and a more compact version of it lives right behind Super plus R or Alt plus F2. Now, there doesn't seem to be any kind of keyboard shortcut to directly open the application menu, but since it doesn't perform any kind of search in terms of application names, files, or settings, there is no reason not to use the application's finder instead of the application's menu. Now, the main thing that might have jumped at you here is that XFCE doesn't have animations, like, at all. Moving to another virtual desktop, minimizing or interacting with Windows, displaying a menu, nothing here is animated. That's not something I was expecting, and it really took me back to the older GNOME 2 days. Though I understand that it's in keeping with the resource usage goal that they have, but animations aren't just useless eye candy. Knowing where a window goes when you minimize it, or seeing your virtual desktop slide from the right or to the left when you move to another one, is a very helpful indicator for a user that things are happening and where to click again to find their stuff that they've minimized or that they've closed it's really a lot more helpful to have animations. Now, maybe I'm too used to our more modern desktop experiences, but this made XFC feel really old and outdated, and I just had a hard time getting used to it. Now, that old-school feel permeates the whole desktop in general. The look of the menus, of the applets, how you use and interact with panels, it all screams GNOME 2 to me, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Personally, I prefer more modern-looking stuff, but for people who want to use their computers like it was in the good old days, in the mid-2000s, then XFC is definitely a great choice, and we already have plenty of other desktop environments that have transitions, animations, and eye candy, so they can pick that instead of XFC if they prefer. Now, in terms of resource usage, XFC is really lightweight. On a cold boot, out of 16 gigabytes of RAM, it only used less than 1 gigabytes, and the CPU was kinda completely idle. When I opened the file manager, it barely made a single impact on the RAM and on the CPU, and opening Firefox with a YouTube video playing made the RAM usage go up to 1.5 GB, but the CPU barely even flinched. So yes, XFC is a pretty lightweight desktop environment, it's gonna run on anything that has a weak CPU that has integrated Intel GPUs, basically XFC is very friendly to potatoes. Now, as I've said, XFC is eminently configurable, and you don't need to install extensions or third-party tools. Out of the box, you can already change a lot of things. So the settings are exploded into small configuration panels that you can access through the settings category of the application's menu, or with a right-click on the desktop. There is also a main hub that regroups all these settings. I quite like that approach of not hiding everything behind one application, although I found the way GNOME 2 did it a bit better. Having a dedicated settings menu in the panel made them easier to access with one less sub-menu to enter. 
hey look, if I'm gonna look and feel old, I might as well start repeating myself. Now I'll leave most of the settings for the video on customization, that will come a bit later in this series, but let's just look at what you can change quickly. Out of the box you can change the theme, the icons and the fonts, and the cursor theme, which is nice, but XFC can go a lot deeper than just purely aesthetic stuff. You have a host of options to tweak how your window manager will work, including options to handle transparency and shadows on the windows, their placement on screen, or the modifier key you want to use to move them. You also have fractional scaling in the display settings and tons of options to make your panels look and feel like what you want to use. They even ship panel profiles that let you change between various default layouts, including a macOS-like one with a dock that serves as the task list as well, or a GNOME 2 layout for the nostalgic ones, <coughs> no settings menu, <coughs> or a Windows 7 style layout with a bar on the bottom and nothing else on the top edge of the screen. Now this makes XFCE very easy to customize to suit any kind of user who came from any kind of other desktop environment. But we'll talk more about this in the customization video, which will come a bit later in this series. So, in conclusion, what do I think about XFCE? Well, the default is not for me. I like how it's customizable, the default is sane, the look and feel isn't bad, but the lack of transitions and animations isn't just a problem of eye candy, of resource usage, it's a problem of legibility and user experience, and I have been spoiled by our newer desktop environments like GNOME, KDE or Elementor OS. Now I know we can customize it, and we're also going to take a look at the default applications to see if there's something I like in there. So stay tuned for the next videos in this series. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to receive more videos like this one in your feed. And if you want to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey, so you can click the link in the description below to look at that. If you want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access, whatever your subscription tier, to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!